Greetings. Uh, for a while now, I've been putting exclusive content up on Patreon. My Patreon is very cheap to join. Uh, I think it's like a pound fifty, like two dollars or something per month. Even if you join at the lowest level, you get access to all of these exclusive videos. So to advertise this fact, I'm going to make this one that was intended for Patreon, which would have been the 35th of the videos that I've put up on Patreon. I'm going to make it public. Um, just because it's covering some stuff to do with recapping, which um, by recapping I mean replacing electrolytic capacitors, uh, particularly those that are in the audio path of a Porter Studio or other multi-track cassette recorder. Um, I find that this is something that I frequently need to do in order to deal with issues of no sound, low sound, distorted sound, uh, sound that is marred by buzzing and popping and clicking, particularly uh, in response to moving faders and, and pan controls. You'll see that the quality of the videos that I put up on Patreon are a little bit shot from the hip compared to the ones on the main channel. It's much more kind of a diary style video that's going up there. And the content's very much focusing on what I'm doing on my workbench now that I'm pretty much full time repairing units for other people flipping units on eBay in order to uh, make my income. So I'm not necessarily looking for topics that I haven't covered yet and covering them in the way that I would do on the main channel. Um, but for people who are you know, deep in the hobby, deep in the process of repairing electronic things, and hopefully it does give you some interesting insight into what I'm doing as somebody who is doing this kind of stuff pretty much daily now, or at least you know five, six days a week. So I hope you find this interesting. If you do, please consider going over to Patreon and supporting me there. Thank you. This is a Yamaha MT120. This is my TIAC test tape. I don't know whether it's tape curl or the way it was recorded in the first place. Um, track four is a little bit quieter than uh, tracks one, two, and three. Levels from track, they're all pretty even. If I turn over to stereo mode, you can see I've got both of these cranked. If I turn them both to the right, I'm reaching this LED. If I turn them both left, uh, I'm completely maxing this out. Prior to this, I was having a problem where the right hand side wasn't passing signal at all, but I, I desoldered this master fader and I was getting continuity from it. I since replaced the 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitors associated with the pre and post buffer. Now let me think, is that all on? I'll maybe need to check the schematic. Maybe there's more than one op amp. Yeah, there must be another dual op amp for the other side of it. Anyway, the signal is getting through the master fader now, but it's much quieter on the right hand side. So that's what I've got to investigate. Here's the schematic, and yeah, sure enough, there's a pre and post master fader buffer. And, you know, we've got IC10 and IC11, so I've either recapped this side or this side. And if I've replaced four caps, then I've only replaced half the caps associated with the master fader, so that's probably the next thing for me to do. In that previous diagram, IC10 was the pre master fader op amp, whereas IC11 is the post. So this is the post one, the pre one's up here. So probably going to be good practice to find. I assume it's one, two, three, four caps here. Replace those caps and see if we're doing any better. Now that I've recapped this op amp as well, I've got almost the opposite problem. Now the right hand side's much louder than the left with uh, just tracks one and two turned up one's and hard right one's panned hard left you can see the right hand bus i suppose what's that 6 db louder this is the right hand side 2.6 volts rms the left side i'm getting 10 times less you know sometimes the only way to find the pitfalls is to stumble into them head first graphic eq on the master bus is downwind if you like downstream from the output buffers in the master fader so by turning off the eq and pressing play i now have even response from the left and right bus the next problem i have is with the relative levels of the mixer section if i switch the meters to track mode we can see that things are pretty even but if i switch to back to stereo mode now and turn up each of the channels and turn so here's Track one, all the way up, quiet, 
track two. You can hear the sound coming from the headphones maybe, and it's not only a lot louder, it's actually distorted. Three is about where it should be, and then four, it's audible, there is sound, but even flat out, the sound isn't coming through the fader well enough to make the stereo output light up. So I'm going to continue this recapping process and uh, get all the audio bypass amplifiers around the individual op amps for, for the fader buffers. And you know, if that many of them have failed already, then there's a chance that some of these ones that are associated with input preamps are probably going to go as well. So while I'm in there, I'll probably just replace all the audio path caps in one go. So you can see that I've replaced all the capacitors uh, that follow the input switch. So now if I turn up the individual faders, they're all coming up to roughly the same level, which corresponds better to the way that the output from the tape amplifiers is even. So if anyone tells you recapping is a waste of time, in my experience, a lot of the time it isn't. More often than not, it fixes problems I'm having with levels, distortion, uh, even improves crackle and weird shit happening when you move faders and pan controls. And I'm sort of pontificating here because I don't fully understand, but I think that because the capacitors are DC blocking, if they become leaky, then changing resistances actually change the relationship of output impedance to input impedance between upstream and downstream gain stages because it means the changing value of any moving resistor is altering that balance of impedances between the gain stages if the caps are leaky. And I think that the audio path caps go more easily is because these will actually blow if you put a high voltage to them in the wrong direction but they've got a small amount of that voltage going in the wrong direction every time the AC swings. That could be a misunderstanding of the problem, but uh, the result is the same, which is maybe 9 out of 10 times replacing caps in this way does work.